Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to it again, another installment of The Week Ahead with me, Trader X. Now, if you're new to this channel, um, this is probably not going to make any sense to you. So I highly recommend that you go back and you watch my videos on the market makers and how to trade with the market makers, right? Or trading in harmony with the market makers. Both those videos will take you about three hours to watch. Is it three and a half, almost four hours to watch? Uh, but trust me, it's good material. So go back, watch those before you come back and watch um, the week or uh, the week ahead, rather, <laughs> not the week off, but the week ahead. So, and uh, if you're new again, hit that subscribe button and uh, join us in our journey to becoming professionals, right? Trading in harmony with the market makers. Um, yeah, to all of my uh, family. I'm going to call you family from now on. <laughs> to all of my subscribers, welcome to it again. Um, so, you know how this works. I'm just going to be going through all of the opportunities that we identified or I identified last week. As well as I've added one more. And I had a special request from Facebook where a couple of guys actually wanted me to take a look at Euro USD as well as GBP USD. These are the beginners, right? The beginners are trading only the Euro USD as well as the GBP USD, right? So we'll jump into that um but without further ado let's jump into it guys so we're going to be looking at the ones that we identified last week first and uh as you can see down here usd source franc that's the new one that i just added right uh, i took a look at the markets on friday as well as today and yeah usd source franc is the only one that also is showing some promises there so we could take some trades off of it provided that it you know it's well set up um all the other ones up here to the new guys, these are not giving me any good um, signals yet. No no good vibes yet. So we're going to leave those. They're nowhere close to interesting levels or trend lines or whatever the case is. So we're just going to leave those out for now until, you know, they are primed and ready to make a move. Without further ado, let's jump into it. We're jumping into gold, right? So gold, 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 gold. Mm. If you recall, this is one of those... This is one of those uh, pairs that we identified last week, right? It didn't behave, so um, yeah, we, we I didn't take it. Yeah, I didn't take it at all because it didn't behave. It didn't meet my criteria, uh, or our criteria. It didn't meet our criteria, so we're gonna leave that one out, right? Sorry for the pauses, guys. So yeah, it didn't. It didn't. It didn't behave, so I didn't take it. Now let me show you why I didn't behave. What I mean by it didn't behave. If you all recall, the week ahead, last week's the week ahead, uh, only showed us this candle here, right? Let's explode that a bit. Move. Let's explode that a bit. Whoops. And my arrow has just vanished, but it's fine. So we only saw this candle here, right? Last week. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Sure, we can all see that. So last week we saw this candle here. Remember what I said to you guys? I'm hoping for a nice big candle, bearish candle, bearish candle accompanied by high volume. And that did not happen. That would be this one, right? Yeah, it's that one. So that didn't happen. Well, we got one of the, you know, one of the, um, for lack of a better word, signals, actually not signals, one of the criteria that we're looking for, right? So we got that nice bearish candle up there, but we didn't get volume. Remember, volume needs to be above moving average and it needs to be higher than the previous two candles, right? If it's higher than the previous two candles, by all means, then I would have taken this to the downside, but I didn't take it because volume it was just not on our side, right? So what am I hoping for? this week or oh, next week delete all arrows what am i hoping for for next week this is what i'm hoping for for next week right i'm hoping the price actually comes back up here at this candle here you can call it a spinning top you can call it whatever but this channel here we don't give names to our candles they're just candles basically so i'm waiting for price to actually get up there let's explode it one more time yeah, I'm waiting for price to get up there and test that level, right? So uh, I'm hoping that it does this, comes back up here. And then once it gets up here, it could overshoot a little bit. That's fine. But 
I'm hoping for a candle that's going to come down a big, nice, juicy, bearish candle to the downside, accompanied by very, very critical, accompanied by high volume. Once we get that, that is a signal to short this pair or short gold, right? It's been in an uptrend for far too long. Uh, it's been in an uptrend for far too long now. So a reversal is imminent, right? Yeah. So that's what we're looking for at this particular level there. If we get it, then we can short it, right? However, though, if you don't get it, you could play the continuation game. I'm not going to be playing that continuation game. That's absolutely fine for me. Um, all you'd have to do basically is wait for price to come back down here to this level here, 131634, right there, and give you a bullish candle to the upside accompanied by high volume. That is critical. And then your next target would be 135814, which is up there. I'm not going to be playing that, but, you know, if I don't get any opportunities and this happens, I might just consider it. But we'll see. We'll see, right? I'm a trend trader. I don't like small moves, but, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what, what gold decides to do. So if it does that, I'll be more than happy to take it. And if I don't get any opportunities anywhere else. Great. Moving right ahead. XAG, silver. Silver is the same thing, basically, as gold. So we're just waiting for it to actually do that. You know, come up here and give me a signal to the downside. Um, it could overshoot a little bit like that. If it overshoots like that, we need a swift candle that is going to come back into the trading range here. And once that, it, what, once that happens and we get a nice juicy candle to the downside, accompanied by high volume, we'll take it to the downside, right? And our first target for silver will be here, 14.67, first target. Second target would be down here, right? Great stuff, moving right ahead. So like I said, XAU, XAG, more or less the same thing, right? NZD, USD. NZD, USD is my uh, star player currently. Star, star, star player. Uh, I've got a trade going on uh, NZD, USD together with let me just go back there together with NZD Swiss franc, right? So NZD Swiss franc and New Zealand dollar, US dollar pairs are greatly correlated, right? So they both go down and they both go up roughly at the same time. But NZD Swiss franc moves harder than NZD USD, right? So NZD USD could move 80 pips. NZD Swiss franc could move 110. Um, so I favor NZD, but they both move more or less the same. So you could have trades on both, right? Um, yeah, so that's one thing that you need to be aware of, guys. So here's what happened here. Um, in the last installment, we spoke about, we were here, we were looking at this candle here, right? So what we were hoping for on Monday from this candle, let's explode it a bit. We were hoping for this candle to be a nice big juicy candle to the upside accompanied by high volume but that didn't show up right it didn't show up at all so we left it right this was on monday tuesday same thing happened even though volume spiked then you know high even though volume was higher than the previous day it was still small Ugh. did i just do that anyway let me do this here real quickly black and white that's so imposing but anyway uh sorry guys sorry 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. let's let's do this real quickly no gangsboro what the hell is that here we go here we go is it the same color no uh, this is supposed to be gray sorry guys this white is just imposing is it this one no light gray that's it that's the one am i right yeah but the candles are black and white so it doesn't matter let's move right ahead it shouldn't matter right let's move oh what am i doing clean is it clean yeah it's clean there we go okay so where were we where were we what is this nzd usd we're going over to our daily chart oh yeah right, let me put back my level so levels 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 right here there's a level, and right there is another level. Go back to candlesticks. There we go. Sweet stuff. So, like I, like I was saying, um, in last week's, um, the week ahead, 
we were looking at this candle here. So like I said, we were waiting and hoping that this candle here, let's maximize that, this candle here would be accompanied by high volume. And that didn't happen. Following day, same thing happened. Even though the volume spiked higher than the previous day, it's still low volume. It's still below moving average. So I, we let that go, right? We let that go. Now, here's one thing, interesting thing that actually happened, right? Now, I knew that, well, looking at the background of the markets, looking at this, basically, I knew that the market is due for a reversal, right? Uh, due to this candle here, the printed here, due to this candle here. This candle actually gave it away. Actually, these two candles, these three, one, two, three. These one, two, three candles actually gave it away to me that the market could just be ready to reverse. But like I said, I was waiting for that um, big candle, big bearish candle with big volume on the daily chart. But that didn't happen, right? Another thing interesting that happened is on this day with the big candle, this was when Trump was delivering his State of the Nation address. I'm sure we can all remember that. So on Tuesday, just before the market closed, I knew that Trump was actually going to be speaking, right? So I just want to show you what had happened there. And that is where I took this trade. Uh, show period separators. There we go. So this was on Friday. Let's minimize that. So this is Friday, Thursday, Wednesday. So this was it. On the close of, you know, Tuesday, 5 o'clock New York time, um, midnight Central African time, right? So midnight, I knew I had to stay up because I was interested in hearing what Trump actually wanted to say. Uh, but at the same time, you know, like I said, I was looking at the background of the market itself. So I knew that price is actually going to go down, right? So Trump was due to speak uh, New York time, nine o'clock, I'm, I'm lying, 9.30 p.m. New York time, right? Um, and just before he actually spoke, and like I said, it was it was after midnight. So I think it was about 3.30 in the morning, Central African time. But before that, an interesting, hap an interesting thing happened. This candle here popped up on the, day, on the hourly chart, right? Let's maximize that. This candle here popped up. Now, this candle, if you look at volume, this is the volume for that candle, right? Let's minimize that. I want to show you something that is very interesting. If you look to the left, all of the volume to the left is actually lower than that candle. So that candle took out all of the volumes for the past two days, Monday and Tuesday, right? So when I saw this candle, when it was about to close, I really knew that I, need to, I needed to take a trade here, right? Because it fits into what we do here. You know, this move is backed up by the market makers. If you, if you all remember you know, the lessons that I, uh, or the videos that I uh, uploaded previously, you would have known that, and you were looking at the daily, I mean the hourly chart, you would have known that this is actually a good place to sell, right? And therefore, and this is a signal candle, basically. It's, it's a nice signal candle. There's no reason for us to actually not take it. So I took it. I took it, and my stop loss was right up there. I was risking about 17 pips. And I'm currently, for 17 pips, I'm currently, I think it's 140 pips, if I'm not mistaken. Give or take. It's actually 147, give or take. But about 140 pips. I'm currently 140 pips up. So if you had seen this, and if you had scroll down to the hourly chart i would take it that you you too would have actually had this trade as well now an interesting thing also happened on nzd swiss franc which i'm not going to go into because it's more or less the same thing so around about the same time the same thing happened with nzd swiss franc on the daily chart so i've got two trades one on nzd usd and another one on nzd swiss franc right nzd swiss franc is just yeah sky high basically the pips that i'm collecting there is just yeah lovely but anyway that's that's new zealand dollar us dollar right so i'm going to be monitoring this based on the daily chart um my first well my target was down here right remember we had mentioned that it is possible that the market makers could drive prices all the way down from up there 
to down here right taking out all of these stop losses um that were all of these stop losses actually here at this candle there right so they could just possibly be taking out all of these stops before price heads up again why is it heading up remember guys we had identified that price wasn't a downtrend it found support and general consensus is we're going to be going up remember that great stuff so overall trajectory is we are going up okay i'm sure you'll get that moving right ahead cats was frank cats was frank interesting little sum of my bitch right here cats was frank is i'm gonna show you something that i noticed actually on friday right so remember we we were waiting for price to actually come up here right but price did a u-turn i'm sure we can all see that it did a u-turn and it looks like it's heading down right well it's not heading down this is a knee-jerk reaction basically it's a complete knee-jerk reaction let me show you why i say that this is to me is a move that is just designed to catch retail traders out right this is not a genuine move why is it not a genuine move i'm sure you have already figured that out volume is below moving average we can all see that volume is below moving average and when volume is below moving average then that basically means the market makers are not backing us up they're not backing the move down you know what i mean so therefore the move down won't last long it could just reverse where it is right now uh monday's candle could just go up even higher and if that's the case you know we're waiting for price to actually come up and collide with this resistance zone here and then we're going to just wait for reversal candles to the downside or reversal candle to the downside accompanied by high volume right um but for now yeah there's nothing that we uh, there's nothing that i'm going to be doing here i'm not going to be taking this trade look a bullish candle could show up here nice big bullish candle with nice volume to the upside you could take it i'm not going to be taking it and your target could be up here right up here at 077071 i'm not going to take it because i'm just gearing up basically for a short here you know what i mean uh, I'm, I'm not interested in this move like i said i'm a trend trader i live for the very very long moves up or down right I'm, i i look for those big juicy trends um, you know, just so that when I cash out, I cash out big. So, yeah, little moves like this. Yeah, it, it, look, it could be lucrative. Like I said, you could take it. I mean, it could give you about 146 pips, which is a lot. So if you want to take it, practice caution. Remember what you need to look for, right? And that is a nice big bullish candle, which will be blue. Or it will be green in your case if you're using if your candles are red and green um yeah and nice high volume nice high volume nice big candle and then we can take it to the upside right and your target remember 0 0.77071 do not compromise and you have to have your stop loss remember practice good um um, um what is it <laughs> my brain is just shutting down but uh practice uh, um um uh, I was going to say money management, which is actually essentially money management. Um, yeah, but your, your your risk management needs to be on par. Remember your risk management. You always have to have your stop loss and do not risk what you cannot be able to afford to lose. Right. Great. Um, moving right ahead. So that's Kat Swiss Frank, right? Uh, Swiss Frank Japanian. Swiss Frank Japanian. Tricky some of them bitch as well. I'm waiting for price to actually come down here. Once it comes down here and collides with this 108.765 i am looking for um a nice big you know bullish candle to the upside with high volume and as you can see down here volume is is just below moving average so this move down here is not backed up but i'm hoping that it actually comes down here still collides with this and then we'll see the market makers hopefully come back in to drive prices up if that's the case we're gonna take it um and our target would be 118204 so that will be roughly plus minus give or take 945 pips these are the type of trades that i actually live for i live for trades that are this big 945 pips is what i live for 
And I, I, I hope everybody actually also lives for these, you know. You look forward to such big trades. Basically, hold it and let it take profit, essentially. But the only time that I'm going to be taking it and it's going to be attractive to me is if it comes down here and it collides with this support on low volume, right? So I'm hoping that it continues to decline, volume continues to decline and stay below moving average. And, you know, we'll get the big bullish cattle to the upside with nice big volume, volume spike, and then we can take it. That will be a signal to the upside, right? We buy it, we let it go. Let it take profit, basically, right? So that's also another one that I'm interested to see what's going to happen this week with the Swiss franc Japan. Yeah. Now, pound, pound Swiss franc. Pound Swiss franc also moving. You see, this move down here to the downside is not backed up by the market makers. I mean, look at volume. If we take a look at the volume down here, the volume is below moving average. So meaning that, yes, it's high, it's big, big, bloody blah you know big volume but for the fact that it's below moving average then that means yeah it's it's below average basically uh compared to 14 previous candles but that I, i'm just being technical right now but let's just say that it's below moving average so i'm not interested in, in taking this one this basically means that the market makers are not backing this move up this could just also be another move to induce selling right to get uh, retail traders to sell um, either their positions on their way up here uh, because look how, how quick it actually started going up so a lot of people could have just possibly jumped in here and now they're offsetting all of those people here uh, and getting people to sell and you know inducing panic for these guys that bought thinking now that the market is actually going to drop and once that is complete we, we are going to see you know a big bullish candle to the upside um but however though the only time this is also going to be attractive to me is if it comes up here and then it gives me a signal to the downside a bearish candle nice big volume to the downside nice big volume above average down here and yeah i'll take it to the downside and give or take would be looking at about let's see about 689 670 pips or less than that give or take like i said plus minus so i'm looking for shorts on um on the on the british pound swiss franc right so that's what i'm looking for so we're still waiting for it to actually come up there and then we'll take it to the downside uh where are we now pound japan yen pound japan yen oh yes i forgot to show you something pound japan yen i'll get back to it pound japan yen i'm waiting for it to actually come up here as well as we can see this move down is also kind of like an offset basically um, to induce more selling before the market makers actually move prices up, which I'm hoping that it's going to come up here and collide with this uh, trend line. If it does collide with that trend line, we're going to be waiting for a nice bearish candle with high volume, which is above average, to come down. Oh, well, yeah, up here, right? And then we'll take the move down up to 135.929. Give or take, we'll be looking at about about 900 pips 990 yeah 993 pips 1000 pips round about but we'll see what what you know the market makers essentially want to do with this one here but i predict that this is actually what's going to happen but remember guys we don't predict we wait for mar for the market or rather we wait for price to show us uh, price and the market makers to show us where they want to go now dow jones another tricky sum of a bitch right here now the Dow, remember guys, we had, I had hoped really that, remember when we did the last installment or the previous uh, week ahead, this candle, we were looking at this candle here. So what, what I was hoping for was, I was hoping for, you know, this candle here to be a nice big bearish candle that's going to close below this trend line here. And once it closes below the trend line, they are accompanied by high volume down here then we would take it to the downside right but it was never going to be a short-lived downside you remember why right because the dow jones as well as the s p 500 all they want to do is trend up right so this could just possibly be another pullback inducing you know panic in the market uh you know to get people to let go of their positions and once it gets down here to 22716.9 then we can take it to the upside and hold it till kingdom comes really um, but that didn't happen here 
and therefore this actually started happening here this would have been a nice candle to take the trade and you know no foul if you took it here right uh, based on this candle here the reason for that is because we had a nice volume spike which is above moving average right above moving average basically and i also wanted to point out something here real quickly i'm sure everybody knows this s p 500 dow jones um have somewhat of a correlation to uh the us dollar right whenever the us dollar appreciates in value right s p 500 as well as the dow jones decline you always you need to understand that correlation will help you sometimes well not really sometimes but all the times you know, it will give you another opportunity to benefit off of another currency pair. So if another currency pair is going up and you know that the next one is going to be going down, you can you could have both trades, you know, but you need to know what the hell it is that you're actually doing. But nonetheless, let's just let's not go into correlation. That is something that you guys need to figure that out on your own. Right. But nonetheless, this candle here, nice volume spike, nice candle to the downside. You could have taken this one. Right. With. Um, you know, a target at 22716.9. I didn't take it, partly because I missed it. And another thing is I wanted to close below this trend line because this trend line was respected on two occasions, down here, I mean up here and up here, right? So it was respected on two occasions. So it is a significant level. I'd like to think it is a significant level, but yeah, not really bad, but that's the reason why I actually want price to start moving below this moving, I mean, this trend line in order for me to be able to take it, right? Um, well, in addition to the fact that I missed this candle here, right? Uh, secondly, what I want price to do is I want it to come down like it is right now, come down here and then try to go up and collide with this trend line and then Give me a nice juicy candle to the downside. Then I'll take it with my target at 22716.9 or even down here. 21743.8. That will be my second target, right? So that's the S&P 500. No, that's the Dow Jones. Um, which currency pair is it that I wanted to show you guys? Was it Cats was Frank? Was it Cats was Frank? Was it Cats was Frank? Yes, it was. It is. So, Cassius Frank, what I noticed on Friday as well as today is, right? If I do this here and I put in my trend line here, this trend line is not really for. It's not really a nice one, but if I do that, it's too far off, right? But if I do this, if I connect that top there, with this top here, then it's something completely different, right? Something completely different. Look at that. Now this suddenly becomes an interesting move to the downside, right? Suddenly becomes, it changes, our, it changes my perspective of where I wanted price to actually go, right? So, you know, previously I wanted candle, I mean, price to actually come up here, right? But now that I've put this trend line here, it makes me question the fact that, you know, price and due to this, you know, knee jerk move down here, it makes me think twice about price actually going all the way up to that box right there, to that pink box or to that level 77071, right? Um, because this knee jerk reaction could just basically say or be communicating to us that, you know, this trend line is actually being respected. I mean, if price can print such big candles to the downside on low volume, then this basically means that this could just be a significant level, right? If it is a significant level, here's what we're going to be looking for. Yes, price is actually coming down. We wait for it to do that, come back down. And we're gonna wait for price to collide with this trend line again. Once it collides with it, we wait for another set, uh, signal to the downside, and then we can take it, right? That is provided that price doesn't you know, from where it is right now, it doesn't go up all the way up here. If that's the case, then we're still interested in selling this uh, pair once it gets up here, right? Uh, but if it so happens to collide with this uh, trend line, uh, we're still going to be waiting for, you know, that candle, that big, nice, juicy candle to the downside with high 
volume always remember that with high volume and then we can take it to the downside in which our target would be down here right great stuff moving right ahead usd swiss franc i'm sure you guys see why usd swiss franc looks nice and attractive currently <laughs> Well, it looks nice and attractive, you know, because it's, it's an uptrend, a long-term uptrend. Uh, since Feb 2018, this currency pair has been going up. And in addition to that, it's been respecting trend line, so, which is great. However, though, I'm sure you can see that it's also been respecting this um, resistance zone up here in addition to this trend line, right? So what does that say to us? This says to me here, if i get or should but the, the, it's highly unlikely right now now that i look at volume and i look at this um you know the structure of uh, the uh, market itself and how the what well, price essentially it's highly unlikely that we're going to be getting a reversal here the reason for that is because you know volume down here is below average so volume down there is below average, which says something to me. It tells me that the market makers are not really interested in price actually moving up here, right? And but however, though, we've got this candle here that is printing. And, you know, to add more to that is this candle, the next candle here, this candle here has nice high volume, but still below average, right? So this candle here in order for us to actually take it to the downside this candle here that closed on friday should have closed with high volume as well had it closed with high volume then i would have taken this to the downside basically and my target would have been round about here or even down here based on these two candles here or based on this res uh, support here right but due to the fact that this candle printed the way it printed following this candle here and there's no volume to the downside, it's highly unlikely that, you know, price is actually going to do something of this effect go all the way down. I see this actually coming back up uh, down a bit and then completely going up to, you know, break this resistance level here. Now, once it breaks that resistance level, we all know what we're waiting for. We're waiting for it to actually come back down test this level again and then we wait for a bullish candle to the upside and then only then can we take it but remember this bullish candle needs to be accompanied by high volume which is above average and only then can we able to take it right now euro usd euro usd has been uh, in a range for far too long it's not attractive to me right i'll do an analysis analysis because um, you know i was requested it was a special request from my facebook uh from my facebook buddies but look Here's why I don't like this, right? Um, it's it's not moving to my liking. So I, I try to stay far away from it even then. Uh, the reason I stay away from, you know, Euro USD as well as Pound USD or Pound Dollar is because they are the two most traded currency pairs in the whole world, right? Um, Euro USD being first, GBP USD being second, right? I avoid following the herd. Like I said, I'm a contrarian. I like to think differently to everyone else, right? Why I'm saying this is because wherever there is a flock of, you know, retail traders, that is where the market makers want to be. And therefore, it opens up a whole lot of, you know, it it, 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 it just becomes more interesting and, and, and more financially viable, for lack of a better word, for the market makers to manipulate markets. Uh, based on the euro usd as well as the gdp usd so that's the reason why i do not trade these currency pairs but when something comes up i'll take it right but let's go through the analysis here so this is what euro usd has been doing and this is what i don't like about it for now um this is what it's been doing and it really doesn't look quite nice to me it really really doesn't look quite nice to me however though what i've just noticed here is this move here is not backed by the market makers. I'm sure we can all see that. It's not backed by the market makers, which basically says to me, we should be looking for a candle to the upside here, right? Nice big candle above average down here. And then we can take it to the upside. But the only crappy part about it is 
first target is going to have to be here and that's too little for me first target is going to have to be here which is about 209 pips second target is going to have to be here which is about 454 i'm looking for something that is going to be coming all the way up here right there is a huge possibility that that could happen but you know the way you know this currency pair has been in the past couple of months it just it, it doesn't look attractive to me you know what i mean it could range for a very very long time before it actually starts going up i'm not quite too sure about that um but yeah, if you want to play it you need to be extra careful man and remember with, with the whole brexit thing looming yeah it just does not it's not attractive to me it's the same thing with gbp usd it's the same same thing um it's not attractive to me i i just don't want to trade it uh, but like i said you can trade it remember you have to practice good risk management as well as you know you know follow the rules of uh, our system and you could possibly get some nice pips out of it uh, but gbp usd it, it's not really attractive to me um you know f f f you know just to do this analysis here i'd actually wait for price to come down here first once it comes down there which is highly unlikely though that it could go all the way down there because look here this move down here is accompanied by low volume market makers are not interested in moving prices down it still has a long way to go still has a long way to go from where price is now you know to this um, support line which is about about 248 pips if i'm not mistaken but over 200 pips you see 200 let's say give or take 268 pips it still has a long time to get down there and you know 268 on a move that is not backed up by the market makers is not an easy thing to achieve so it could just turn here and continue on its way up right and if that's the case what you want to wait for is a nice big candle to the upside with a nice big volume and then you can take it to the upside right but i'm not going to be trading that one like i said practice good risk management as well as follow the rules of our system and yeah you, sh you should easily make profit but remember your target has to be up here because we don't know what price is actually going to do there and again you know with brexit looming and you know all the troubles in 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 in, uh, in britain with uh, the uh, brexit thingamajig yeah it's it's not something that i want to trade basically but you can go ahead and trade it if you want to like i said look after yourself because look, the market makers are savage when it comes to these two currency pairs. They know this is where everybody flocks. You know what I mean? When you start off as a trader, you know, getting your feet wet, everybody keeps telling us, you need to be trading Euro USD, GBP USD, or all the major currency pairs, those eight major currency pairs, so everybody calls them. Um, yeah, so try to trade those bloody blah, blah, blah. So everybody flocks to those. And that's where the most manipulation actually happens, right? um because yeah it's, it's lucrative for the market makers really to uh take our money so euro usd as well as gbp usd i'd say to you guys steer clear of those right and uh yeah you should be safe um guys that's it <laughs> that's it 38 minutes of the week ahead um yeah so guys remember it, it's it's important that you guys follow the rules of the system right and I highly encourage you to still go out there and uh, find the material on the relationship between volume as well as candlestick analysis because it will open up. Wow, it's it's just going to make you see the markets differently as well as research the market maker, the market makers, right? And how, uh, well, they won't give you how they trade, but just research the market makers. You'll get some information, lucrative information that you can, you could actually use to your advantage right other than that guys thank you once again i really really appreciate your time it's been good it's trader x and i'm out guys